Hello, Vince here. Welcome to my first cooking video. Today we're gonna to be doing shrimp scampi, a classic favorite. So I chose this dish because it's actually just really, really, really simple to make. So let's just go through all of our ingredients to start. We have a little bit of a linguine, super simple pasta, salt, pepper, red pepper, oregano, a little bit of seasoning, we have about 10 extra large shrimp. This is just gonna be for a single portion. About two big uh, spoonfuls of butter. We have about two shots, a good old double shot of extra virgin olive oil. We got one lemon. We got some fresh garlic. We got a good old chunk of Parmesan. And we have a mix of both normal parsley and Italian parsley. And don't forget some white wine. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the different ways that you can go with this dish. And I've elected to do this the simplest, easiest way possible, and ultimately give it up to you on how you wanna take the dish. So I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about wine. Um, it's great to use a Chardonnay, a cab salve, um, really anything that you actually just enjoy drinking. That's going to be a good wine that you want to use with your shrimp scampi. I'm just using a normal cooking wine today. If you're looking to keep this dish budget friendly and you just want to make it cheap and you're not a big drinker, you can use some normal white cooking wine that you just get at the supermarket. So, cheese. This is not something that I would recommend that you cheap out on. So you can find the pre-grated cheese, the bag cheese, whatever, but it's not real. And what do I mean by it's not real? So when you buy cheese in a bag, it is not just cheese. It, it typically has some sort of casing on it to kind of keep it from lumping together. Um, and there's a reason why freshly grated cheese tastes totally different. So if you're going to choose to ingredient an ingredient to spend a little bit more on, do the cheese. Let me talk about garlic a little bit now. So once again, it's easy to just buy the pre-done garlic that's in a jar. And there's nothing really wrong with that if you're if you're looking to do something quick and you're trying to make less of a mess. But Fresh garlic is always going to taste better, and I always recommend that you use fresh garlic whenever you're able. So, not a lot here. It's, it's super simple. So, let's get started. So, we already got a pot of water boiling for our pasta. Um, you're going to want to cook your pasta a little bit less than you normally would. So, if you already like your pasta al dente like you should, you're going to want to just take it a couple minutes less. So we're using just a simple box pasta today. Um, fresh pasta is great if you have access to it once again, but not everyone does. And if you just want something simple, you can just take your, your favorite pasta from the store. So what is this? Uh, cooking time, 10 to 12 minutes. So what does that mean for me? Because this says 10 to 12 minutes, that means I wanna cook it like eight, nine minutes tops. And why is that? That's because you're gonna to want to cook your pasta with your sauce, with your shrimp at the end. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're trying to do pasta is they throw everything on top at the end. Not the way to do it. So if there's one thing that you take away from this video, please, 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 cook your pasta a little bit less and intermix it with all your ingredients at the end. You'll thank me later. So we're gonna do this about eight minutes as soon as that water is boiling. Another mistake that people make is they don't put enough salt in their water. So this is actually just starting to boil. So we're gonna salt it. A lot of people stop there. Not enough. 
when you have a big pot of water, you need a lot of salt. All right, there we go. Okay, right now it's 3 p.m. on the dot. We're just doing a single portion. I typically always cook these boxes in their entirety, but because I'm just making lunch for myself and I'm not expecting to have leftovers, I'm just gonna do a single portion of pasta. And this is cheap, so if we make a little bit of extra, not a huge deal. down you want to make sure all your pasta is submerged and we're going to give it just about eight minutes it's 301 now we're going to give it to 309 before we take that off okay so as you can see these shrimp uh they still have you know the outer shell on so once again, this is something that it's a lot uh, cheaper to buy it with the shell on versus the shell off. It's convenient, once again, to choose the shrimp that, you know, has already been shelled. But for one, you know, gives you a little bit more control. Um, it lets you choose whether or not you want to keep the tail on. And two, sometimes you, you want the shell for different reasons. You want it to make a stock or you want it for another purpose. So that's nice as well. But we're just going to, you know, these are already deveined. We're just going to peel them. Super easy. Okay. And the shrimp are the star of the show here. So once again, if you can, you want to get the biggest shrimp possible because it's really going to make a big difference, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting some uh, medium shrimp or even some large shrimp, but when you can get the extra larger, the jumbos, you're going to thank me. And the people eating at your dinner table are also going to thank me. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can take this a step further if you would so choose. So I already talked a little bit about wine. Um, Choosing a higher end wine versus cooking wine is obviously going to give you the flavor of that beverage. So that's one of the first places I would start. You can choose to add peppers if you enjoy eat. So one of my favorite things to do to kick this up a notch when I'd like to is I'll use Fresno chilies. I'll be doing plenty of recipes with Fresno chilies in the future if that's something that interests you. but don't know what a fresno chili is it almost looks like a red jalapeno but the flavor is a lot different and it's got some heat to it but it's not overbearing and it's you know honestly just very enjoyable so you see how, how easy this is though you know you'll spend a lot more money for this already to be done um and it's really not that bad you see like took what 30 40 seconds under a minute you know and i'm even kind of being kind of slow and careful here you know it really is not that bad so last one boom done okay just gonna Wash our hands quick. Pasta is about halfway done. 
And honestly, that is one of, if not the most time consuming part of this whole thing, depending on how slow you are at chopping. So we are well on our way to being done this dish. So always make sure to move your pasta around a little bit. You don't want to get stuck. Got four more minutes. That will be done. So, next. We have our seasoning here for the sauce we'll be making. But we're going to want to add a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. And I always prefer to put a little bit of crushed red actually on the shrimp too. I like a little bit of heat, even though I'm not electing to use any peppers or anything crazy this time. Um, I think it's great. So you want to rub that all in. So imagine that these shrimp just brought home all straight A's. No B's, no B pluses, and you're just massaging them in. And there you go. All right, we're going to let that chill. Rinse off our hands. Keep a close eye on our pasta. It's got two minutes. And I can tell this isn't done. Because like I said, we're not even looking to finish it. We're just looking to get it about 75 to 85% of the way. Maybe 90. All right, so we got our fresh Parmesan. And we're just going to grade some of this. So again, not, you know, terribly difficult, but it's something that a lot of people, you know, would rather just spend a little bit more and have it already done. But even in the places where they do it fresh, you know, it's not like it was just done right then and there if you're lucky maybe it was done earlier that day but even typically not that okay. and we don't need a ton of cheese because remember this is just this is just my lunch so let's see. we want a healthy amount all right there we go so as you can see healthy little amount of cheese nothing too crazy We got one lemon here. We're gonna we're gonna slay, save a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna save just a little bit for a little bit of garnish at the end. But we got one lemon here. That we're bringing, we're going to be using for our sauce, and it's three oh nine, so this can come off. Did not take long. And I can feel the pasta's got a little bit of. A little bit of body to it still. It softened up a little bit, but it's definitely not cooked all the way. And that is what we want. Okay. So we're getting close to 
getting ready to actually make the sauce. So, like I said, I have both types of parsley here, a little bit of both. Um, and we're just going to chop this up. Doesn't need to be perfect. And just do a little rough chop. Um, it's okay if you got a little bit of the stems in there, but you don't want too much. I don't mind a little bit, but you don't want a big piece of stem. So like I was saying, there's a lot of other things you can do here if you want to add another level of flavor. So one of the other things that I like to do is get some little tomatoes and chop those up and include those in the sauce as well. You can use capers, shallots, but if you haven't made shrimp scampi before, I recommend just keeping it super simple, super light not complicated and then once you feel like you understand what's going on you can add different flavors to complex the dish and that is what's great about cooking and what's nice is we are almost ready to make the sauce So I want to take this time right now, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up, give me a comment, tell me what you think, hit the subscribe button, and thanks for coming along. It's my first video, and I'm excited to do many more for you all, and I'd appreciate every single one of you that comes along for this journey. You just want to make sure there's no real big pieces. I mean, if there's a little bit, it's not going to hurt anyone, but. You want it to all come together. And let's just save this little piece for a little bit of garnish at the end, too. Why not? So another mistake that I think a lot of people would help make, they don't use enough garlic. So like I said, we're just making one portion here. And a lot of people would be like, you know, do one, one clove, two clove, one and a half clove. No, 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 no. No, no, no. One clove. I can eat a, a clove of garlic in a bite. No problem. Done, good. Okay. I just like to smash it with my hands. This piece doesn't look great. Another thing about garlic is sometimes you'll have, you know, a little brown piece or something. You don't have to throw out the whole garlic. You just cut around it. Unless it looked real bad, then throw that in the trash. Okay. See, like a lot of people would use maybe that much, that much, but no, not, not Vince. We like flavor. 
And garlic's one of the best flavors there is. Here in. Probably one more. Okay, so what do we got here? One, two, three, four. We'll call that five, five and a half, six, I guess. Five, five and a half cloves. So, just want to chop this up, throw away any parts that don't look good. But once again, people's thresholds for that kind of stuff are honestly too low. A little tiny, tiny spot ain't going to kill you. But obviously, if half the clove is brown, it's no good. My parsley doesn't want to stay away from my garlic. It's like they were made for each other. And once again, just like the parsley, this doesn't need to be perfect. You know, it can be a little bit rustic. But... And honestly, with this, if you got a big piece of garlic, I'd probably be thanking you. Okay. See, you want it to look something like that. And now we're getting down to the exciting part. We're actually going to cook. Okay. Remember that extra virgin olive oil we talked about? We're going to take a good bit of it, about half of this double shot, and pour it in there. We're going to turn this on medium, medium high. Uh, let's just call it medium. I'm gonna let this get hot. So another another problem that I see with people is they don't let their pan get hot enough. They just don't, and that's a mistake. So. You want to make sure your pan gets hot enough. It's really, really, really important. And this is going to take a little bit less time because we were using this for the pasta. And we're actually going to start by taking some of the fresh garlic and letting it marry with the oil. And if I could recommend any one single piece of cooking equipment, it would be this cast iron pan. Cast iron is just so, so, so versatile and it lasts forever. I've been using the same cast iron pan since my first year out of college and I do not see that changing at all. All right. Give this about another 30 seconds. It's starting to bubble a little bit. You can almost start to smell the oil. And a trick is, if you want to know if it's hot enough, you don't have to put everything in at once. You can kind of just... Can you hear that? That is what we call perfect. So this isn't going to take long. Um, none of this is going to take long, but the garlic especially, you want to move it around. Um, you don't want to burn it. And you just want to make sure that garlic gets a little bit of love. About 30 seconds, maybe even a little bit less. We're gonna add our shrimp. Remember, we already seasoned these shrimp. And these are not gonna take long either. We got 10 shrimp here.
You really don't want to overcook your shrimp. And they cook super, super quickly. Just want to get a little bit of a sear and a little bit of color before we start building our sauce. And look at that. That already looks good. Add just a little bit of parsley to start. Give it a little toss. We're going to take a quarter of the lemon and get it directly on there. Give it a little toss. All right, now here's the fun stuff. Take that wine. Get that in there. And next, this is where it gets real good. We're going to take some of that butter. Get that in there. I'm going to start with about one and a half of the two spoons that I mentioned. We might not need the last one. Next, we're gonna take that seasoning I showed you, throw that in there, a little bit more of the parsley. We're gonna crank that down low. Now we're gonna take our pasta that is definitely not cooked all the way, because once again, remember, we didn't cook it all the way. We're going to put it right in there like that. A little bit more fresh parsley. Give it a little bit of a mix. And you might ask, why did we throw the pasta in so early? And that's because we really want everything to come together. Um, I intentionally didn't cook the pasta all the way, even to al dente, because I wanted to finish with the shrimp. I want, I want the shrimp flavor on the pasta. I want everything to be together, the garlic, the parsley, the red pepper. Just a little bit more olive oil, not all of it. So you see we didn't even use that full double shot. And I don't like to cook with recipes, which makes the whole ordeal of this actually much more difficult. Because, you know, in order to teach you, I need to show you quantities and amounts and all that, but you want to cook to taste, you want to cook to feel, and it might not be the exact same every time. A little bit more fresh parsley. We're going to take a little bit more lemon juice. You see, now it's starting to come together. It's starting to look like that dish we all know and love.
And really, all you're looking for is you're looking for the pasta to absorb the flavor and break down to proper al dente. The shrimp is already cooked. You can clearly see that it's cooked. And you're looking for that wine to just reduce a little bit. Um, so your pasta doesn't just taste like alcohol. So we're not quite done yet, but we are going to see what this is tasting like so far. Mm. Mm. So the flavor is just about where I want it. It needs a couple of things. It needs a little bit more red pepper. It needs a little bit more fresh black pepper. It's got enough salt. It's got enough oregano. It's got enough butter. And if you're not tasting your food while you're cooking it, how are you supposed to know if you're doing it right? Almost done. Now look at that. Look at that. This is what we want. So I don't want to overcook the shrimp. So I'm going to turn this off. But I'm going to let it chill there just for another, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, minute, however you want to think about time. You can see this is what we want. And this is super easy to make for another person, multiple people. You know, I could have easily made this for multiple people with you know, a few more shrimp and just using a little bit more pasta. Really it. And using the rest of the butter. Um, we have leftover butter, leftover olive oil, leftover parsley, and that's okay. You don't always have to use every little bit of what you would originally put out. Look at that. That is what we're looking for. A little bit more parsley. A little bit of Parmesan. So how do we finish this? A couple pieces of fresh lemon. Look at that. Look at that. It's the moment of truth. So, oh man. This is just what we're looking for. And I've been known to eat right out of the cast iron pan. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. The garlic, <clears throat> the butter, the parsley. And adding that little bit of extra red pepper made the world of a difference. And... These noodles, this pasta, still perfectly al dente. Mm. 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 And what's amazing is for how long, oh, mm. for how long these shrimp were cooking. They're not even a little bit overcooked. They're cooked perfectly. Mm. Oh, man. 
This is better than I thought. And you got the little bit of lemon as you're kind of doing your thing. You put a little extra lemon, a little extra cheese. And just keep going to town. Mm. You won't be able to make your friends leave after you make them this. Mm. Mm. And you want to make sure you give every person plenty of shrimp. You don't want to make this with a couple shrimp. I don't care how big they are. Mm. So, mm. I even got a little bit of shell that time. That's how good this is. So, thanks for watching along. I hope you learned something. Drop a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you want want to watch me cook. I got a whole list of ideas, but I'm interested to see what you, as the viewer, would like to see. Thank you again. Till next time.